We welcome all of you in now to the 2023 Play Versus Cup National Championship for Rocket League. My name is Bear Light, joined by the wonderful Hill Monkey Man. And we're going to kick this off here momentarily. A best of seven scenario between two teams who have made it this far through lots of teams that exist here in the Play Versus Cup. Hill Monkey Man, how are you? You know, it's a wonderful Friday, TGIF, and of course, we're going to be hitting the pitch with, of course, a couple of squads that I think have had a, a sort of storied history, short term uh, even, as they both these uh, high school programs really have been able to kind of just joust throughout national competition to make it to this moment. A bit of a rivalry really growing into this moment as PSA as well as DC, they're going to be clashing here on the pitch in a big best of seven. And before we get into the details here, we want to let you know that the fall season, of course, is coming up for Play Versus. So, are you ready to get in on the action? Enroll for the fall 2023 season. It's now open. Discover the opportunities that Play Versus offers and get all the details on the upcoming fall season at PlayVersus.com. That is PlayVersus or PlayVS.com. Don't just watch. Play with all of us. Here, Hill Monkey Man, let's get into the matchup now and uh, kind of go through some of the uh, of how we got here. First, we'll bring up and start with the bracket itself. And Putnam Science Academy in Connecticut is a team that I know very well. They've been around uh, the scene for quite a while. They play really well together, but they're going to have their hands full with Divine Child High School here uh, coming in from Michigan. Divine Child High School. I mean, Michigan has producing some talent. That state is just filled to the brim with it. But if you check out overall records, look at how just the, the playoffs have been so good to Putnam. They really are uh, mental, mentally wise. We got to see a few anecdotes from some of the players. They're coming in with an underdog mentality. That's a fun way to be able to play because you always have a chip on your shoulder with something to prove. But when you look at how their regular season really has delved out undefeated right now, but they're going to be going against Divine Child, who's already proved them themselves in several different uh, instances of competition, just how good they are. This is a collision course of two fantastic programs and something that, I mean, we couldn't ask for anything more when it comes to a big national championship. There is no doubt about it. So we went over the details here, uh, but we do have a special message, of course, from Play Versus as well. So we're going to go ahead and roll that now for you guys, and we'll see you on the other side. When I went to go get my program started, I did a lot of research on what companies people were using at the high school level with regards to playing esports. I found a few of them, but I found that Play Versus not only had some of the best reviews, but had just had just had high praise from people in this in this sphere of high school esports. So naturally, while there are other people in the state, I chose to keep going with Play Versus. So we chose to exclusively work with Play Versus because they just, they offer a, a large variety of games and they offer a large variety of games that our students get behind constantly every season. They're trying, they're trying, they're trying to either innovate, bring more games in, uh, be more communicative. They're a small company, but they try really hard and I obviously really appreciate that. I think Play Versus catalog is what sets them apart from everybody else. Everybody else can offer small things or even tournaments related. Uh, to the game and title that they want to play with. And so I think that the idea that I can build an entire season around a specific title is really enticing. As you mentioned, Hill Monkey Man, PSA Mustangs are coming in as the underdogs technically here. They came in as the 40th seed. Now, when it comes to the championship and how well they've been doing during the playoffs, talk about how that seed can just kind of disappear because teams at this level, when they reach this level of the brackets, they've proven that they mean business, and that number just becomes a number at the end of the day. It really does. It's all of a, uh, a chip, the tiniest chip at this point because guess what? You're at the uh, the table, a two-seat table where one, only one gets to stand up and hold the crown. But when it comes to initial seeding, that's just how your regular season went. Everyone else in the bracket, it may be more difficult based on how you have been seeded into it but otherwise it's now just about getting the job done I, I get to see kind of bracket breakers we've seen it through March Madness and otherwise and it's the same thing here and having that number on you that's going to be long forgotten as long as you're able to put on the belt wear the crown raise everything up with that trophy and of course just get it going but you know they are facing off against a very stiff opponent and one in particular is actually going to have my eye peep the skill of Nick Steve on the other other side when it comes to divine child high school there's gonna be a lot of eyes especially to be able to shut him down the, the fact that you know he was the big name on the side and and really the, the leader of this team proves that the rest of the team has followed suit that the fact that they are true 
um, you know, true support players because Peep the skill is absolutely excellent. You will see the mechanical skill around him, but the you know to to have that amount of skill, um, you know, to pull through for the squad has been impressive to say the least. He's really the one name on this squad, so it's going to take a full uh, team effort from the other side. PSA Mustangs who come in. They have to play in tandem, right? If they're not playing as a cohesive unit, it's going to be very difficult to take away this team. Luckily for them, that's exactly how they play. Co-Fire, uh, Wolfie, and Mini are players, like I mentioned, I've seen play uh, pretty regularly. Their rotations become tighter and tighter. They become uh, more and more of a nuisance the closer they get to your box. You have to keep uh, an eye on that. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble there uh, in your own side. Yeah, you can, you can have all the firepower in the world, but if you have players that we very endearingly call nuisances, be able to demo you, get you out of position, or just have you out of a state of uh, re regular standard Rocket League, then you're going to have to fight through some of that adversity. And I know that sometimes they've been able to do that along the way. There's been a huge bracket they had to really run their way through. But this is a, this is a PSA team, and for Putnam Science Academy, they've won two uh, Connecticut State Championships in their first year. Two regional titles two state championships and they're already looking fantastic and so you do have at least a storied opponent within their own region trying to be able to come at you but this is this is a great uh group in terms of depth when it comes out of divine child i mean when we speak to the coach alone of dominic mccani this is a player that stepped away they're like i've done everything when it comes to what things have been uh, asserted into this program i have been involved in everything i want to take a step back and provide my experience to be able to let students of the next year of this next foot forward for this program really shine and that's a that's another big way that this team has grown that kind of selfless attitude can really help a program for sure. I mean, you've been you've done your impact, right? And you can even add to that impact as well by being a key part in the future. But building into some of these teams that have been uh, building like crazy, recruiting and, and getting their teams into better places have been excellent. But I do want to return to the conversation about this statewide championship. That's nothing to shy off either because Connecticut, lots of stellar programs up there. I'll tell you that. I've gotten to visit that area multiple times. I've seen firsthand, talked to a lot of the coaches up there and they've seen it grow too obviously there's a lot more growth that needs to happen in connecticut but then michigan you can say the exact same thing both of these uh places they come from both of these areas are really growing like crazy i don't think i'm surprised to see these two teams because of it but they have that success at that local level too it can give you a speed boost it's one of the reasons why they might have shocked a few other teams uh coming through here as the 40th seed yeah honestly that's uh you when you come out of a uh, a pocket, a region, a, a bracket this deep, and you know that, you know, when it comes especially to the platform of Rocket League, so much of it is just, it becomes that three on three, that one-on-one -on -one basis. So you could have big big number attached to you. All right, that's cool. Not going to take them very seriously. But when you look on a national scale, regional scale, looking at professionals as some of these players have actually played alongside, been able to kind of um, be in the groove with, it's, you, you cannot write them off. You have to be able to get that match done in the moment. Whenever you kind of compare it to traditional sports sometimes like okay well maybe that means the recruiting base isn't as big but when it comes to esports everyone knows everyone at the upper yeah. crust of this game especially so everyone knows all right who's the up-and-comer who's going into kind of uh, uh big high school moments as well, like this championship as well as into collegiate so you you see kind of that that regional growth but online it it is able to incorporate us all so where you have kind of your state growth coming in with these awesome programs being grown at the grassroots level you're going to find that really be kind of plateaued and everyone's going to be able to fight evenly when it comes to really fighting into these sort of platforms yeah and then the fact that you're able to take that uh, pro level experience you're very close to it i'm not sure that any of these players have made that top level quite yet but they have like you mentioned play with players who have been in there they can really teach you that mentality we see it all the time where some top level players that are in a certain region are um, kind of played down to their opponents well a winning mindset really comes from some of those players that have broken through to that rlcs level because then suddenly you know how to play uh, some of the teams that don't match your speed you play with the same speed you play with the same intensity you do that and you can really control these games what makes this matchup interesting here at the 2023 play versus cup rocket league national championship is that that both sides have that right so this is going to be an uphill uh, upbeat uh, pace consistently throughout this best of seven and one of the reasons why we're excited everybody in chat excited as well um we'll get here to the pitch momentarily too
Yeah, we're going to be going there in just a bit. And of course, this is going to be a maybe a short marathon, but it's still a marathon. It is the end of a long road, a big bracket, but it's still single elimination. But we finally reached best of seven territory, which, you know, when we, when we speak to the, the, the rest of it, kind of best of fives, it, you find that second game to be kind of definitive as what the rest of the series will look like, because that could be a straight sweep. A lot of teams, a lot of players are maybe thinking the Divine Child has that in their back pocket. I need to see if the Mustangs, with all that mentality of actually Acting like an underdog, can they come out as top dog today, or will the Falcons simply fly high? Well, we will find out. Game number one of the best of seven for Azuz. And right now, DC Falcons are looking to press the go-ahead button as that shot just off the mark. The chip is there. Off bomb able to find a little bit of space, and the Falcons kick us off. Oh man, that was a great kick up. Able to immediately challenge, and that's one of those, hey, if you are gonna step up off of one of those stalls from midfield, you're gonna have to take advantage of that, and you must win that touch because the third man gave up the defensive half. So a great takeaway. It was a high risk, high reward style play, and they're trying to immediately get one off of the kickoff. But Kofir, who you, we've talked about having to be the person, the variable of success for the Mustangs, are able to get that save. Ah, bomb already up. It will beat Wolfie with it as well. Many left in no man's land. This one back down though, and many able to work back out. He was a little bit too far forward, but he's able to recover and put this one back to the corner. As Coco tries to play it back off, gonna demo them off of it. Just play it forward here in DC Falcons. Uh, happy to just let PSA Mustangs chase corner to corner here, try to spread them thin, and that way you open up some space there in the box to strike a little bit later. Yeah, they're really not uncomfortable about all kind of ganging up into one side zone either. You saw how all three of the Falcons were just kind of on the left side and just really putting touch after touch. That is a great flip reset, but it's going to be stolen away. Good shadow uh, read by Wolfie, and Peep has to retract back. That's actually on target, and will just barely the last second be picked up. Kofir with a shot, and then a put back by Mini, and again, they're just kind of uh, plinking against the outer rim of the box, but nothing threatening at this moment. But if, if you start to just really kind of side this rotation you can open up some opportunities but very briefly lived and the, a lot of this open space on the backboard and these side walls is looking a bit threatening against the Mustangs it is because you know Peep likes to play aggressively and what this team does is just play in support right they're in the perfect positioning basically every time in order to play at that game there that's why they're getting the great eight chances and the Mustangs haven't quite yet although Kofir was trying to challenge on bomb a good job to follow him in that exact speed to get the save and they will make the clear out to center field and the SEA Mustangs only had possession oh. for a second because they're right out the double demo make it three maybe oh what a save and recovery there from Wolfie who spawned and got the save just in time Fantastic look, but this one isn't over. Opbomb, who has been really the uh, front-running variable in favor of success for the DC Falcons, has been just keeping them upfield. No double tap by Peep, as that one goes a little bit too far to the right. He was still keying it up, though. Mini's going to keep this one on the ground, looking for a power flick. He's got Kofi right behind him, maybe for a double push, but the third man will commit as well. Wolfie to the crossbar, but before he can even reach it, Opbomb has to put some hands on it. So at the midway mark of game number one, PSA Mustangs are getting a couple of looks, but the defense hasn't been shredded apart just yet. They will send a couple, but the double commit will pay off. I like the patience that we saw from Wolfie to play that back down, but they just waited him out a little bit farther. So as good as PSA Mustangs have been amping up here recently, DC, DC Falcons have had the solution. That's until Wolfie puts it back side and equalizes game one here with 203 left on the clock. And from looking at Mini to be kind of that X factor, because you talk about variables, but this one in particular, they've been making some of those more off standard, off kilter, off ball touches. And so finding one as they recommit into that 45, that is so good. And a great communication as well that you can tell that that was told to his teammates. Hey, I'm trying for it. Mini is going to be on the back line as well. Another setup. The third man will not be there, but just keeping him in the box is allowing DC Falcons to have more space to rotate. And Peep is going to give a nice little bumper check over to Kofir, who is just looking for some of these touches. But PSA Mustangs have been really to, been able to oppress against the Falcons. And they're constantly rotating in, right? Watch as the second man, one of the most important roles on the pitch, able to, you know, read the play and jump in at the very next touch read the 50 50 right and they've been really good at that we said that this cohesion of the team is going to be important for psa mustangs and this has been proving that this game one has been working exactly how they wanted it so to see this one go the dc falcons way would be uh very difficult to see so you want to make sure that you get the next goal here with a minute remaining 
they were dominating midfield space, honestly, from the midfield line onward. And that's an off touch. Mini's not going to be able to recover. And then his peep just ripping one on target. This one slowed down considerably. Mini looked like he was trying to pass it over to Wolfie, but he was trying to dodge the bump attempt. So it just turned into a kind of a dead ball play and peep scoops it up. It looked like he was dodging that bump, yes, and then got smoke screened as well because it looked like there was time to adjust to it. The unfortunate reality was there was just no nothing you can do after that flip uh, had occurred. So he kind of got stuck there. Another chance for DC Falcons to get a cushy lead, but that one going to fall right back in the corner. And Wolfie will bump off one. That'll allow a little bit of space, but maybe Kofir waited a little bit too long, had plenty of boost in the tank. Maybe a little bit afraid to show his hand. This one will hit center field. And the DC Falcons here are happy to just kill time as we take down to just about 30 seconds left in this game, number one. And for some of those uh, infield passes, the one-two really hasn't been in sync right now for the Mustangs. They do find at least uh, space up field, and I think they're just thinking they're lucky stars that they have anything in the midfields because they've had to ride the corners on the perimeter. Look how much the, both Wolfie and Mini are on top of each other, and that really takes away some big opportunities for them to excel. Wolfie are looking for, an, or rather, that's going to be Kofi with a chance. He does drop down Wolfie from the opposite side corner. All three in the corner by the Falcons a shot on target, but it will be stopped short by Pete the skill if this one touches oh. the ground, which it will. Game one will be in the books. That's going to be Divine Child High School that starts themselves ahead in the series. Yeah, it was scary towards the end, though. It looked like, you know, Peep had to stay on the back wall there. That was the right decision, but nobody else went out to challenge. Unfortunately, many looked like maybe a bit of a mystery there, but that's something you can clean up in this best of seven scenario. The good news is, you know, when you were technically, you know, seed wise, you're way down below where this DC uh, team is currently. It just uh, it didn't feel that way, right? They felt like they had the same pace, just a couple mistakes that they have to clean up and they can play at that level. I like the way that they played together. Their cohesion was very apparent and if they keep it that way, this will be a close series. It's not going to be a blowout like uh, like some of the experts had said that we heard from behind the scenes. <laughs> Yeah, that was a bit of a fun green room talk. I'm like, hey, you know what? D DC's got this locked up. Nah, th this one is actually be pretty close. And I think that's going to be about execution. If you're, if you're being denied the midfield, then you have to be expeditious at the corners. And then you eventually have to fight your way through. And you definitely saw that trying to work by, both out of Wolfie and Mini. Kofi looks kind of like that guy, the him, uh, everyone that kind of uh, looks for on these different teams to really open up things more vertically. But it, it just seems to be kind of more standard rotations and that was, those were being overtly read by Divine Child but at that last second like you said it was very scary they triple committed into the zone you see Peep with the state of mind to go oh hey okay wait may maybe someone wants to be at that post let's retract back but we also retract and go forward over to game number two PSA Mustangs they don't want to go down by two they got the fight into the next five minutes no doubt in a fight they're willing to do we've seen it in multiple occasions and we'll, perhaps we'll see it again as Hot Bomb holds back. A bit of a miscommunication won't hurt them as they do play forward and peep into the zone, who, you know, really didn't stand out as much as we thought they might here as DC Falcons, you know, have and rely on peep on a regular basis. But I think that speaks to the balance. And right on cue, there he is, putting in the first goal here in game number two to give them a 1-0 lead. Peep's been securing the hard work of Op Bomb. Op Bomb has been just there to either get it in themselves or simply to open up space and allow someone to be able to come up from the Falcons and secure, at, uh, in this instance, an early goal. And so it's it's been fairly slow for the Mustangs to try anything from midfield. And that's just going to oh. be a challenge that bounces through. This one comes out of nowhere. Yeah, it seems like Wolfie was trying to set it up for many who was there, just kind of overshot it. It was a play from the DC Falcons there at midfield to play low. So a smart play there didn't look very aggressive, but unfortunately, Kofir did not expect it to be on target, expecting the 50-50 from the team at midfield. And DC Falcons now stepping up a little bit. This is what we expect a little bit more of to force the hands of PSA a little bit more, but that one could have been one, but a save on the very last line for the DC Falcons. Hot Bomb doing more than just setting fuses alight. He's been able to really defend well for DC as Divine Child simply stands on both sides of the pitch and is putting on a showcase right now. PSA, they've been fighting very strong, but it's been somewhat slow, just trying to be able to find midfield contention, and that's going to be a nice boost takeaway. Kofir is going to lose it out away from, oh, you got him. So, keep 
off from the side. And again, this is looking like more of the same oopsie doopsies when it comes to the near side post rotation by Wolfie. He will chase for the 50 50, and this starts getting neutral in midfield space. That hopefully it has allowed some time for PSA to just recoup on the rotations, go get some boost. Yeah, it looks like Kofir just played to the corner to try and get some himself and leave it for a teammate. And unfortunately, nobody was able to get the call in time. This is going to be dangerous as well. Luckily, for PSA, that was not on target. So they'll hold back here. Good challenge, 50-50, but Op Bomb right back on it. Had just enough boost in the tank to get back up. And we'll play it past one defender. But PSA Mustangs right back on it. They left it though. Peep up on the air. 50-50 from Mini. Good challenge there, as we've been wanting to see Mini step up to take these challenges early. And that was a good example of just that. Yeah, it very much was. And Kofir seems like they're trying to get a little bit faster, but everyone is kind of stutter started. You do have Wolfie in a great position. They do not utilize that extra flip to give them some extra power downfield. And so you're kept moving laterally if you're the Mustangs. That's a clever touch. It turns into a bouncer, but oh, you got him is actually looking for a chance to just get a single one here. As they move across that goal line, it's, be, it's still been very threatening against the Mustangs. No extra touches, uh, at least from the offense as they finally are sent packing. That's a look. You need someone to crash the game and they do get Wolfie. I just want him like a touch earlier and then maybe put that one in the back of the net. Now it's Pete versus the world and the defense of Wolfie is able to respond. Yeah, maybe a little bit quicker from the Mustangs would have been nice, but at the same time, you see these passes out of the zone. They're finding each other down the field and that's been the last couple of times too. The chip, <laughs> they still can't get it through. As the defense of the DC Falcons stand strong yet again. It is an iron wall with several layers, but PSA Mustangs, they're trying to be able to bring the chisel. A bit of a miscommunication. Kofir has not rotated away, just trying to do too much in the moment. Big demo by Wolfie, and that clears out that other corner zone. But again, you see Wolfie and Kofir locked up on each other with many getting destroyed, but ultimately getting at least some space. Aerial ball, a lot of volleyball. That's going to be a big miss by Wolfie. And Kofir has to stay stagnant onto that backboard. Op bomb, ops out of sticking with it. There's no extra boost. Kofir has to just simply play decoy. And I like the extension we're getting by the Mustangs as everything gets a bit quicker. But this demo game is really kind of stutter starting both sides and seems to be playing more in favor of the Falcons. Yeah, a lot of free jumps. It feels like PSA feels like they need to get those free jump reads. And I like the fact that they're jumping out, but they just hasn't been working for them until now. What a shot from Kofir as he was able to redirect that one while upside down still in the air. So those free jumps do come in handy right at the edge of the box. What a shot. You know, Rocket League is made of consistency and then moments like that. You're either going to be what DC Falcons have been doing simply pushing it downfield, seeing if the defense will break, forcing the Mustangs into uncomfortable situations. And then you have players like Kofir who are able to make great redirects. This one's going to be a crash from the opposite Ooh. side. Oh, you got him. Is going to lose on that 50, but that's going to be a consistent volley that returns as the Divine Child High School Falcons, they keep pressing up from the midfield. A great attempt. Oh, you got him. Is a little bit too low and slow, and they've got to have the second man, Wolfie, with a great challenge, but Peep is able to find so much space. Yeah, and that was difficult to, to read and put a decent shot on there. I like the pressure. I'd like to see a bit more of a shot. And Wolfie had to reach backwards in order to get that touch out to the corner. But a good read again. The support strikes through from PSA as they do get it out to center field. And Kofir will stick on this one. Had a bit of an air drag, but had to fall off and play decoy, just like we saw just a couple of minutes ago. Wolfie still holding in the zone, though. Has Kofi, if he wants, maybe a solo play, too. They beat a couple, and Peep has to come back down. Low boost, up bomb, will eventually play it out and bail them out, but it's not over. Down to seven seconds. Kofi up for it. The chance for the double. The back wall guarded by up bomb yet again. Many will press. That should be shut down by Peep. It is, and the DC Falcons go up 2-0 in this series. A great slap down. You saw Wolfie going for one desperation read because you did have two defenders already up in the air and thinking, okay, if I can just get under wherever they're going to try and slam this down, maybe I can force an extra touch. But it was just within Divine Child's control. So that's now two up into this best of seven. We're not at match point yet. If you guys have seen series play or maybe you haven't, well, hey, there's still time for the Mustangs to recover, but they really have to find first scores and they got to keep DC from staying on their half. I swore they were just renting space back there. They got to make this more, way more even for the first minute of play. 
they do because then after that point in time they played very equal if not they turned the tides at the end and it was a little too late now they're down two in the series and that uh, doesn't feel very good I, I like the way that they are still playing together and towards the end you saw that the outlet passes were everything for them they were finding one another and it wasn't the same pattern out of the zone either they were playing deep out of the zone they were playing uh, very close range passes to try to gain possession play you can tell their comms are on point but unfortunately for them they're full effort for five minutes needs to be there otherwise dc falcons could very well continue this could very well go for a sweep here in the series it's just been so close i don't think that's going to be the case only one way to find out we get back to the pitch here for game number three psa mustangs looking to uh, get that first goal and perhaps work some momentum from there yeah you need you need to be the uh the trendsetter the tone setter i don't i don't mind too much about pace because honestly psa has been playing a little bit slower for their executions an extra touch that one was a little bit off and kofir has changed the color of their car maybe just getting the aesthetic the way they like it wolfie with a good challenge and this is already good looks the first half minute of play has been dominated by in the first couple of games by the falcons to simply see the mustangs upfield is huge Ooh. what a big save by wolfie right at the last second can't believe he got back to get that one but that was a huge defensive sequence there is no doubt well when we talk about the shout shot count here hell monkey man typically you're saying hey two zero on the series for dc falcons that means they're getting outshot like 11 to 5 right no it's been very even psa mustangs actually outshot dc falcons again it comes back to taking good chances dc falcons we saw almost just struck through we'll see if psa mustangs can set up those chances like we've seen from the falcons that would be step one, but Peep able to get over. What a flick there, number one, but then to follow it and tap it in even better to make it 1-0 again. This is gross. He knows that there's one defender, and then look at the read from the crossbar pipe, and then just making sure that thing sticks to the ground, goes into the corner, furthest distance from the, the second man that was still rotating at him. That was disgusting that was so good and of course just like the name reads peep the skill that took extra skill and a fantastic uh, series of touches to be able to uh, secure so dc falcons are looking for another one you gotta see the mustangs responding soon i was saying you know peep we expected him to pop off now off bomb could get one themselves but that was set up by peep yet again all offensive plays go through him Oh, you got him as well with the pass back. So all three members involved here. And if that's happening for DC Falcons, PSA Mustangs could pack it up. They have to deny that before that happens. If they're gonna play it that slow, you have to get in their face. You have to find these challenges. Otherwise, it will be a runaway. As off bomb from the back wall will try to clear and uh, they'll push forward but again they're trading out possessions those outlet passes i was talking about being so strong from the mustangs have virtually disappeared yeah and right now kofir and wolfie for the last three successive possessions against them and for them have just been all over each other op bomb's gonna find another one a great challenge just to dissect this defense but this started because kofir was leaping behind wolfie and those two were just connected at the hip a great just continuation and securing that shot and this first minute 50 you've seen frustration really building out of psa and they're getting in their heads because op bomb Typically following that shouldn't be as dangerous as it was, but you know, when there's multiple different ways that DC Falcons can approach it, you have to respect a whole lot of different looks. And that's what it got in the heads of the fence there and allowed that opportunity. Now back down we go, PSA Mustangs in a very compromising spot and that shot you wanted to go. The fall was a bouncer too. An underrated save there from Peep to bounce, to read that bounce shot and get that one out the center field psa mustangs again they're looking like they're getting back to their play style but yet again it's not until the second half peep the bounce sounds like a pogo's only wait hold on i was gonna say a pogo's only style account and it looks like actually that we may be seeing some kind of change up for this lobby depending on what's going on that's interesting because no defense was there I believe everyone is currently out of this one so we may be actually finding ourselves into a reset so those challenges that, that we've said psa mustang have been forced into which are really quick reads uh falcons do that with ease so they've been looking like the stronger of the two teams currently as we send you right back down to the pitch here at dfh stadium 
And we play into the second half of this game number three, where PSA, a chance and opportunity. Serve, call it a fake, call it what you want. Still oh. there, is it gonna roll in? It does, and not a spectator either, as Kofer able to ride that wall up on the post and tap that one in, and they're back with the two. You know the coach is punching air right now. It takes all three. It takes jamming the box. It takes slowing them down to the speed of the North American land snail, which is actually quite quick depending on what you're doing. But it takes extra efforts just to be able to get one through. And then extra efforts that are very smoothly accomplished by the Falcons. All that extra work nullified as they get one back. Yeah, and Kofer did everything you can, right? All the way back, momentum rolling into the net, so you just have to top, toss it off your own crossbar. And that falls right in front. Unfortunately, no support there again. Has been the moral of the story for the first half, so a little bit more, and Mustangs would be able to kind of hang around here. But that's a quick answer, which I think is the most important thing. It can be very frustrating whenever you're finally breaking through, finally getting these goals, and DC Falcons has the answer basically instantly. Yeah, this it's one of those just things where they're like, okay, hey, you know what? We're we're here for kind of that 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 punch out, and the creativity is starting to really kind of come about, especially because Pete, the skill, they're just wow, they're just controlling the box. They're able to corral the front. Sissy, oh, you got him! Just kind of land on the ball. Everyone, it's nearly a triple commit. Mini hung out on the backboard, but there was no way for them to be able to read after both Wolfie and Kofer vacate, especially when they have to drop down to go and find it, and then a placement shot at the back post. That's it's just gonna take them off by surprise. Yeah, it's perfectly played. It's just slow play early, right? Then came back down towards it, and PSA got antsy all three once. And if you're gonna triple commit, obviously you need somebody to connect there. But that was due to that well played shot, like you mentioned, and that's why the Falcons have been really dismantling the defense of, of the Mustangs currently. Oh. Now one's one back though, as Wolfie will fire one from the top of the box. And back within three, so it feels decent here. That flip reset set up Wolfie. It was a perfect setup there from Koper. Yeah, and it, it looked like Op was ready to go and challenge Wolfie. You saw him at the midfield. It was like, all right, do I want to go out and bully this player? But then just seeing that Koper was thinking or about to actually drop down, that gave Wolfie just an ounce or just a foot of extra space to go forward and scream at that ball. So eventually they do find two, but Five have been accomplished by Divine Child High School at this point. Massive clear by Mini off of that big 50-50 on that challenge. You're going to be able to find the next one, but no boost. That means it must be finished off by Kofer and Wolfie. A great takeaway by Oppom. That's a big demo by Kofer. His peep is going to go to the sideline. And now oh, you got him just has to have enough, just enough for the rest of his squad to be able to escape. And DC Falcons, they get themselves out of harm's way, and they start going back to work on the box. Yeah. Transitional play though from PSA. That one will drop down. Op Bomb was able to handle it. I love the ideas Mustangs are throwing here towards the Falcons, but every single time they're just a, a pixel off of where they need to be in order to find the angled shot that would really harm this defense here. For the Falcons, they will look out there though, as there was a miss here. I know it's a long shot here in this game, but uh, obviously you're all in at this point, trying to make sure it's not 3-0, but the Falcons have them right where they want him. And oh, you got him, got him there. As he'll push that forward, seals the 100 boost as well, down within 15 seconds, and the dagger will be there on a 6-2 lead here for DC Falcons. They will be on match point in game number four. You see PSA, it does look like they're uh, just seeing the next game very quickly coming up in their windshield, and this one's in the rear view, and they're just streaking towards a position where they got to be able to answer. PSA, Putnam Science Academy, they're going to have one extra chance, and they got to treat every single one of these like championship point because it very much is for Divine Child. Shot is on target. Maybe this one can be some kind of galvanization point just simply to find that spark. I mean... Even the coach was like, if they treat this like ranked, they just have some fun and relax. Maybe this opens up in a different way. Maybe we get to see that in the game number four. Definitely want to relax. And the DC Falcons make it very difficult, uh, obviously with their timely goals. But yeah, you're right. You, you have to have fun with it at this point, because if you're just stressing out here at this 3-0 count, there is no way that you're going to break through the Falcons, whose name we will uh, change to be corrected in the, the next Falcons. one. The Falcons strike through in this instance. <laughs> And everybody getting on the board goals-wise as well. Everybody involved here. You love to see it here in these championship games, but the Falcons just a little bit stronger, which has been the statement that we've said pretty regularly here throughout this series.
you know, you're talking about depth of program, talking about how, you know, everyone kind of, uh, they do what? Red, white, I guess, for this school and otherwise. And that really kind of promotes growth to be able to go on to starting varsity teams, JV teams, or whichever. And I got to think that, you know, you look at kind of that leadership that has to exist at this particular level, especially for Putnam Science. This is not an easy position to be in, obviously. That's probably one of the most difficult positions to be in when you have to reverse sweep and you have to do it in a championship form. This isn't just yeah. some semifinal. This isn't just some qualifier. This is this is the this is it. This is the last table that you're gonna be sitting in until you go to the next academic year and for competition. So this is that moment where Divine Child, they just simply need to put it away. Business as usual, it's one single game, get it done, focus, isolate, move forward. For PSA. This is everything, and they have a grind, but they, too, have to keep it to just this single game, one game at a time. All on the table currently, and that's the way they've been playing throughout the series. Um, you know, now is the time to play with desperation, so at least they have that going um, for them. In addition, of course, that final goal that we saw them put in as well uh, to make it a three-goal deficit. So perhaps momentum. I forgot the uh, uh, the the word that you used, galvanized, I believe. A uh, very so. fancy word, by the way. <laughs> Love that. Bringing some variety to the stream as well. And the Mustangs need to bring variety to this game number four. Otherwise, the Falcons have the chance to close out now. Look, I, I know uh, a few of my SAT words. Uh, some of them stuck. That was about it. But if there's anything that can happen, it's got to be this team sticking together. And just a tiny touch, it comes off the pipeline. But Op Bomb was ready to ignite. I do like the last attempt, recognizing that it's gotten over your head. Kofor, I think, got just enough. Remember, that was Wolfie. But either way, it's going to be a early score again. That's not what you want to see if you're the Mustangs. No, you're going to feel like you're chasing this game completely unless you get one right off the bat here. And Kofor was lined up for that cheat play. And many now will carry it back down the pitch. But that was a missed opportunity there if they were able to land that right on the car. Peep going to challenge here. Wolfie up early there, back wall, the challenge, and will carry it all the way back to the side wall, left side. If you're the DC Falcons fans, right side. But many looking for Wolfie up front. He's gonna be demoed off that corner anyways, and DC Falcons with all the room in the world to work with until Kofor was able to shut it down. Kofor was looking, just kind of going to a fist fight. He was able to get a demo off of some of that possession and also looking off of that same demo to try and get a midfield pass. No one is there, and they're finding these extensions. They're moving up into the same familiar corner, up into the right side, just seeing what they can challenge. That could have been a giveaway. Mini actually does find a demo onto Opbomb, and that's a great uh, procession upfield. Kofor isn't on target, but they've been able to force the Falcons into awkward positions, and everyone's diving out. Opbomb fills the third man roll right now weird back pass that has a lot more heat than i think wolfie was intending and this actually makes all the mustangs retract after they've worked so hard to get the falcons on their heels yeah they have they've really tried to you know played that desperation game they've been trying to play uh, at least hungrier than we've seen them before and now kofor gonna be taken out though not a whole lot of options but wolfie was there but uh -oh. sent the link to the pitch yet again from peep Luckily, Kofor was demoed, so he was able to respawn right on the right side to make the save. One goal, two minutes. That's a good uh, kind of stymie of this offense, but Peep is going to get the ceiling reset, and he's going to try and slow musty oh, this. He lets it my. bounce. He's actually going for the bump, just trying to straight up grab a clip for the old high school of diploma as well to be able to graduate with that and just find some extra once Kofor is going to be challenged by oh you got him and that's going to send it all the way to the back corner oh that one's going to just rush off the near side pipe but that one's going to be moved over as well but it turns into a pass op bomb not there quickly enough wolfie finds at least some singular touches but we're seeing so much boost oh. look at the redirect it rings off of the perimeter and old iron size is just getting battered and bruised by the mustang you have to keep playing the way that you've been playing for the Mustangs. I love this look, but unfortunately, you want one to go in to feel Ooh. good. And there it is. What a passing play. They thread the needle on the shot as well. It's Kofor that will be credited with it, and the equalizer are just in time to feel good about it. 2-8 left on the clock. We're tied at 1.
Ooh, bomb facing his own net because he wasn't ready for the position, especially Wolfie, who went off the ceiling for the midfield just to go make that challenge. It was put very high by Peep the Skill and then finished off because Kofor was in a great cherry pick position. So finally equalizing. It's not just at zeros, it's at one apiece. But now if you're PSA, put them science, they gotta be able to get another one. If you're able to get two in a row against the Falcons who have just been in control. And you do see some of these recovery rotations. All the Falcons are retracting back save one and this is the only one that really kind of saved them uh, to allow them this much space otherwise they're getting kind of caught up in each other allowing more just individual plays to be manufactured yeah which individually has been working for the falcons not so much for the mustangs they work very well when they're together Unfortunately, that was a missed opportunity as well, but Kofor able to okay. challenge that 50-50 from Opbaum to keep it forward. The Falcons, if they do end up going up 2-1 in this one, I might have to call it. I mean, you've seen that same result over and over again where they are able to keep with this Falcons team, and uh, we'll see what they can do. They've done a good job to at least hang with them in the first half of the game, which has been, has been a struggle for the Mustangs, but the Falcons have them right where they want them, and they've got the right person with the ball right now with peeping the challenge, and will challenge the box too. Somebody needs to get there a good challenge to keep it out to the corner. Peep the bounce, peep the challenge, peep all the mechanics that are starting to get flashed by peep the skill. Less than a minute to go, DC Falcons, they need one goal to be the separating factor between themselves and the Mustangs. Mini on that challenge, taken away. Oh, you got him, diving for yet another one as Kofor stays into the box. That's gonna drop down. Is anyone gonna be able to scream at it? Mini gets a single touch, but Wolfie was looking for just the same thing. They were a bit behind, shots on target, big save by peep the skill. Another feed, PSA, they're not gonna let this one die. A double bump by Wolfie. You have to rip these on target. It's going to the opposite side wall. A passing play will be denied by oh, you got him. Multiple times they had opportunities to finish that one. You needed a goal here, but they still are not out of it. They have to calm down. That's to peep though. The shot far side. Nine seconds left. The Falcons on top. Oh, this one, just see if it hits the box. A great challenge. Peep was there and Wolfie was a bumper's width away from being able to reach that ball. All that offense, all those tries, nine seconds to go. Falcons just gotta put this one on ice. Wolfie, flip reset. This is for a championship and to try and just survive, Kofor has to keep it up as that one's gonna go to the wall, ceiling on down and no dice. DC Falcons, they're gonna take it in for the national championship goes to them. Wow, what a performance from the Falcons. The Mustangs had an idea that when they weren't able to put those last chances on target, that it's been every single time the Falcons are able to march right back down, find the back of the net. And of course it was Peep. Had to be Peep. The one to lead them early, to lead them often, and to lead them at the very end to get that game winner and the match clinch clincher at the very end. They were outstanding throughout, and the Mustangs again just a little bit short. Oh man, that, that 10 to 15 second uh, rotation where they had all that heat against the Divine Child's back, uh, backboard and of course being able to feed the ball, but it allowed enough time, just a tiny bit of time for the defense to just simply go forward, put a man on target and just deny them. The gate was never truly open. This defense allowed just the tiniest glimpse of hope, but then ultimately shut it down. But good job trying. Putnam Science Academy, they're a very good squad. This is going to be a, story, a storied rivalry for a long time, especially because so many of these players are coming back, and I can't wait to be able to see what they'll be doing into the next academic year. But this one is all about Divine Child. The Falcons, they're definitely flying high. They are. Uh, we set, or heard from our experts that it was going to be an easy sweep, which I don't think it was. No. Um, and the Mustangs have quite the future ahead of them, yes. they Like I mentioned, their depth is only growing over there in Connecticut, so they'll continue to uh, try to ride those and create that, uh, that rivalry that we see. Now, a rivalry in my eyes is only created when you're able to uh, really challenge, take games, and make it a close match. A lot of those games were close. Unfortunately, the match results weren't, so that's the next step in their uh you know, process. And eventually we might see that become a rivalry. Um, so, I mean, credit in the world. This team was the 40th uh, seed coming in. Now we said we tossed that out of the window in the finals, but they played their hearts out. And like you mentioned, it was just a couple of opportunities here and there that went shy of the net that really could have made the difference, turn the tide to at least give them a challenge. Yeah, honestly, they, I, mean, I, I say rivals, maybe it's PSA saying, hey, we're your rivals. And they're like, 
Uh, okay, sure. But hey, there was <laughs> definitely some of those chances they're going to yeah. be looking back on. There's a lot of coachable uh, kind of material here about simply just being able to kind of stay more uh, head steady. There was, there, was a, there was a lack of getting to your game plan and playing behind that. But also you have really good players, especially with Peep and Op playing against you from the side of Divine Childs. And I will not take away from them. Both teams able to grind it out. It was a 4-0 sweep. Regardless of what you see of the, some of those individual score lines, it definitely just turned the right way. So, hey, maybe in the future we'll be able to see them go at it again. These two teams have been able to go deep in these brackets, and I'm sure we'll be seeing them again sometime. Well, the Divine Child Falcons, again, are your grand champions, your uh, your national champions here for the 2023 Play versus Cup as the national championship comes to a close for Rocket League. We appreciate you all tuning in. Until next time, we will see you around. Good night.